what's up guys lord has in here back again with another video and today we're looking at the jbl 4 portable bluetooth speaker as i said earlier we are going to work our way up to more pricier speakers and this here sits just above budget bluetooth speakers so you're gonna pay a bit more for this one the jbl flip 4 as of now sits between 70 dollars and upwards of 90 dollars on deals we've looked at two bluetooth speakers already which i leave linked below and before we start on the third, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications if you're new here. Smash that like button. It helps YouTube suggest this video to more and more people. Really need your support on that. That said, let's get started. Some key specs of the JBL Flip 4 include Bluetooth 4.2, 12 hour playtime, off one charge, IPX7 auto resistance, JBL Connect for party boost, and a built in mic. You get a string moving into the speaker for when you to carry it around, the power button, battery level indicator LEDs, and the JBL Connect buttons on the back of the speaker. Open the waterproofing flap to find the charging port and the aux input. Up top is the Bluetooth pair button, with volume up and down buttons, and the play pause button. The speaker is covered in woven fabric and its sides are double-sided diaphragms which will see vibrate in a bit. Now, if you're a smart lord hasn't subscriber, which you are, you probably noticed I have two JBL Flip 4 speakers. That's because we will be testing out JBL's Party Boost feature where you can pair multiple JBL compatible speakers together for enhanced stereo effects or to amplify your music and get a party going. While at it, I should mention some key strengths about the JBL Flip 4 Bluetooth speaker. First is voice and call quality. Watching videos on the Flip 4 is quite an experience. Might go as far as saying better than playing booming music on the speaker. Sound quality is good, quite refined, clarity is amazing, and balance is configured just right. I found myself many times just watching YouTube videos on the speaker or doing presentations just for that amplified, refined voice quality. And it's been my go-to speaker for phone calls. Listen to this. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's a happy birthday. <laughs> thank you, thank it's you, thank you. Birthday. Hi. <laughs> okay, you know what? Like right now, mm. I'm working on a video. Mm -hmm. Imagine I'm working on my birthday. Good. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm calling you through a speaker. Okay. How's the call quality? It's great. It's great. I thought we could go for my skill. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how good is the call quality? Um, I'll say nine. Nine. Nah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. so, let me text you. All right. Welcome. What I'd say has been a video long in the making that might not make sense at first, but definitely will as we progress through the video. Today we have a camera comparison between three carefully selected Samsung smartphones that represent all the categories users might be interested in. On the budget end of the spectrum, we have the Samsung Galaxy A31, the Galaxy A51 representing the mid-range part, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 on the flagship end of the spectrum. It's also waterproof, but unlike the Harvey T5, this one won't float, so have that in mind when you go dunking this at the pool. The speaker can also be used to launch Google Assistant if you remap the play pause button to launch Google Assistant when you tap and hold. Now, that's a perfect segue to the app used to maximize the functionality and configurability of the JBL speakers, the JBL Connect app. This app has issues of its own, but let's get you up to speed with what it is. So, the year is 2020, and most audio tech manufacturers are making apps to go with their audio tech, be it speakers, however large, and headphones. Example, Bose, Sony, and the said JBL, with the respective apps meant to enhance your listening experience on whatever device you're playing music from. Credit where it's due, it works as intended, but with a catch, rather on some JBL devices. I'll explain why in just a sec. 
So the app allows you to connect your phone to the speakers. See all the speakers in one consolidated view. See how much charge you have on each speaker. Even rename the individual speaker and pair it to other speakers. Even has a cool subtle detail that shows you the color of the speaker you're connected to. Allows you to map the speaker buttons to certain features like launching Google Assistant. And it's so futuristic, it allows you to update the speaker's firmware. Quite a mouthful of should be good things, but they don't translate as expected in real life. Firstly, the app is slow and laggy, inconsistent, and some parts feel poorly built. Example, the My Devices section. Furthermore, the app keeps closing in the background, even if it's the only app running on the phone's memory, and takes even longer to restart afterwards. In addition to that, pairing a speaker to another speaker can be quite a faff and is never consistent, a hit or maze of sorts. Do it now and it works seamlessly. The pairing process is smooth. Do it two hours later from now and it needs you to disconnect. Switch the speakers off and back on again and redo the process. Quite a pain sometimes. I also noticed this odd glitch that speeds up the music when you have two JBL Flip 5 speakers paired and playing together when you switch between stereo and party mode. Here's a quick peek to what I mean. For clarity and emphasis sake, I've only experienced that problem on the JBL Flip 5 and not the JBL Flip 4s. More on that in the coming JBL Flip 5 review, so you want to subscribe and turn on notifications not to miss that video when it drops. Here's a comparison between the JBL Flip 4 and other speakers in this series. Hey, rolling through the city in Dania, oh, da, kama huni pendi uneza shu, ka, misina raka sinapu. The JBL Flip 4 is a great speaker that's just hampered by poor glitchy software that JBL is taking ages to put right. In fact, I advise to just play music on the JBL Flip 4 or Flip 5 or other JBL speakers with just plain good old Bluetooth. The app, so far, according to me, my experience, only facilitates pairing multiple speakers together and switching channels as they play. And in any case, most people won't go out and get two speakers like me or these guys here. So you'll be fine just pairing two of the speakers without the app. Good old fashioned Bluetooth. In fact, unlike other manufacturers that offer you equalizer controls in the apps that control various sound parameters like bars and treble on their speakers, JBL offer none of that in the app, which adds to more emphasis why you should skip the app and just go at this old school. That's been it. Thanks for watching. These days we're keeping things short, precise, straight to the point. Share this video with your friends. I really appreciate it. Smash that like button. It helps YouTube suggest this video to more and more people. Really need your support on that. Subscribe if you haven't yet, because I'd like to see you again around here. Till next time, my name is Hezion. This is Lord Hezion. See you in the next one.